Welcome everybody, I'm John Zadar and I am making this video strictly out of popular demand. Just here recently, I've gotten a slew of requests to share how I set up my charts on TOS. TOS, that's Thinkorswim. It's a free trading platform. So if you don't have one, folks, go get it. All you got to do is sign up with TD Ameritrade. No money required, no deposit. You don't even have to trade with them. And you get a free trading platform that is worth hundreds of dollars a month. Absolutely. Now, we are focused on two things. We are going to set up our charts for trading. We're going to use the moving average lines. We're going to get the MACD and the RSI and the volume in the right places. And I'll give you a little insights about them. Second thing we're going to do is set up our scanner. We go looking for stocks maybe by volume or percentage gains and then you want to see the charts. We're looking for those technical setups maybe for a play in the morning or a long run through the week. I can show you how to get a button next to the stock so you can populate a chart and I've got a shortcut where you can just use the arrow keys and just go up and down and that is a lot quicker and just by glancing at the chart you can see what you need to see real quick. So let's jump on over to TOS right now and set up those charts. Easy peasy. I'm sure you recognize this. This is TOS, Think or Swim from TD Ameritrade for free, which is why I really use it. This is how we're gonna set up our charts, right there. That's what I trade with. Uh, there are five moving average lines here. This is a list over here. I use five. Most people use lots of different types of tools, but four of these moving average lines are most common. They are popular. Now that's the reason I use them. No, not because I want to be popular, but because we're all looking at the same indicators, the same signals. They move, I see it. They stop, I see it. So I know when to move and when to stop. Think of it as a traffic signal. When you see a stoplight turning red, you know the cars in front of you and the cars behind you are all going to be doing the same thing and slowing down hitting their brakes. And when you're all sitting there doing nothing and the light turns green, you know without talking to anybody what they're going to be doing. They're going to be moving forward. Why? Because you're all looking at that same signal. You're all using the same signal and that indicator tells all of you what to do and when. And that's why I use these because most people are using them and we all see the same thing at the same time. A great example is this price coming down here and falling. It broke through the 50. Now I've got a 50, most people have a 50. We all saw that and that caught our attention. It came through a very thick uh, board, if you will. Think of these as boards. The smaller the number, the thinner the board. The bigger the number, the thicker. When that price breaks through a big number, it's got some power. You better pay attention to it. And this came down hard, didn't it? Now it's sitting on the 200 SMA. It's got everybody's attention. We're waiting to see, is this gonna be a buy signal or a sell signal? If it comes down and keeps moving down, sell. If it bounces off, that's a buy. So we're all watching this at the same time and I know when to move because I'm watching the same signals they're watching. What if I was watching, say, a 142 day simple moving average? Who else is watching that? Probably nobody else. So when I see a signal, and it's a legitimate signal, it is real, nobody else sees it. So when I go to move, no one else is moving. When I go to stop, no one else is stopping. It isn't working in my favor. I'm going against the tide. So by using the most popular setups that everybody else uses, that keeps me playing the same game. Now I do use one additional moving average. That is the Hall 200 day moving average. Now what the Hall moving average is like is like the 200. That is 200 days of prices all added up and then divided by 200. They average it out and that's how you get your line and they do that for the 50, the 26, for all of them. The 200 Hall moving average takes those SMAs, the 200, the 50, takes all of that wraps them all up and averages them out. Then gives a little more weight to current activities. So what you've got is basically a 200 SMA moving by gravity closer to the activity of now. So I've got a short-term trend on 200 day and a long-term trend on 200 day. 
that whole moving average is something I use. I don't know how many people use it, but I like it. So that is an option. You don't have to use it, but I refer to it often in my videos. So if you are setting up your charts to specifically follow me in the videos, this is how I do it. So let's clear this chart off and start off with a naked chart. I'm going to get rid of all of this. There you go. Now that should be your default. I honestly don't know what default is. I haven't been there in a long time, but that's a naked chart. Now the truth of the matter is some people can trade just like that. That's right. They can use those bars and read the data that's in them. The tags above and the tags below are rejected prices that nobody would work with. The solid bars are prices they would work with if it's hollow or solid. There's lots of information here. And when you learn to read that data properly, you can predict with a seven, eight percent chance out of 10 that it's going to do what you think it's going to do. Now, I understand candles. I do use them, but I'm not that great at them. So I do use simple moving averages as well as the others. So how do you set them up? This is real quick and simple. Up here across the top, you've got all these different icons. You've got this flask here that says studies next to it. But then over here, you've got a second flask right there. This is for editing those studies. That's what they call the moving averages and a lot of other things. So click it. You're going to get that box right there. Now we're going to do all of our work real quick here so we don't have to jump back and forth, back and forth. We need one X potential, three simple moving average, and one haul. Then we add our MACD and our RSI, and we're pretty much set up except for setting the numbers. So let's get to it. It should already be clicked on studies here. You have strategies and sets. We should be on studies. In the text box, we're going to do all of our work right there. Type EXP. That stands for exponential. Find moving average exponential and highlight it. Click add selected right there and it populates. That is now ready to be put on the chart. But we're going to go get the rest before we throw it up there. So come back over to your text box and type in simple. Find simple moving average and highlight it. Click add selected three times. One, two, three. Back to our text box. Now type hull, H-U-L-L, -L, like the hull of a ship. Up, H-U-L, <laughs> and highlight it, add that. Now that takes care of all of our moving averages, at least getting them over there. Now we're not going to have to change any of this stuff except the number, that 9999, nine, nine, nine. that's going to have to be changed to 9, 26, 50, and 200, and we'll get to that. Last thing we want to add are our MACD and our RSI. So type MACD, find it, highlight it, add it. Voila. And last and definitely not least is our RSI. Highlight that and add it. That's everything. So we have all the tools that we're going to use. Now there are, I don't know, a million things you can do on TOS and I'm not going to show you all the different tools. We're only going to look at what I use. Let's keep it simple. No need to confuse ourselves. You want to add more later? Absolutely. But let's just start with the basics. Now what we're going to do is come over here and set everything. These gear icons are the only buttons we're going to tag. We're going to start with the top one. This is our moving average X potential for nine days. It's already got the nine typed in here. We're going to come down here and choose the color we want. I particularly like blue, but you can choose any color you like. When you grab your color, hit OK. Now, most of these boxes, I like tick just the way they are. And they should be already like this by default. Show study only one you need up there. You want to play with the rest and learn, that's up to you. Uh, show plot, if you don't have that ticked, you won't see the line. Uh, show bubble, see that green bubble over here? That's the price bubble right there. It follows the price. Well, you're going to have a blue one now for your 10 day. And then you'll have another one for your 20. And those will all show up here so that at a glance, you can see where your moving averages are at. If you want them, if you don't, turn that off right there. I do, but I don't want you to tell me what it is so you can turn off show title. We're good here. Hit OK. And we're going to do the same thing over and over for the next few. This one is our 26 day simple moving average. 
go ahead and type in 26. For this one, I particularly choose a bright orange as my color. Again, you can choose whatever color you like. Hit OK. Turning off the title, leaving everything else. OK. Next one. This is going to be our 50-day simple moving average. I use yellow like a warning light. Whenever my price gets close to this, I want to pay attention. And I use a bright yellow. Hit OK. Turn off the title. Good. And the last moving average we use, simple moving average, is the 200. Type in 200. This I use red. That is my color choice. Danger Will Robinson. My price gets anywhere near this. It has always got my attention. I don't care what direction it's going, up or down, you have got my attention. So there that is. And again, turn off the title. Click OK. Last but not least, by any means, is my whole moving average. Already set to 200. If it isn't, put it on 200. Now, these are all set to close. Make sure you're set to close. You don't want open because if it gained from yesterday's close to today's open, you wouldn't get any reading on that. It wouldn't show up. So always make sure you have close. Now, I use two colors on my haul moving average. Not necessary, but I do it for my own good. When the price is falling, it's a purple pink color. When it starts going back up, it is blue. I do that just for a quick glance so I can see what's going on. You can use one color, two colors, any colors you like if you choose to use the whole moving average. Turn off the title, hit OK. All right, that gets us all set up. The MACD is already set. We don't have to make any adjustments as is the RSI. So all we need to do is hit apply. But wait, don't do that yet. What if something goes wrong? You mess it up or it goes all blank again. You got to come back here and do it all over again. Save it. Save it as a set. Just come over here, click save as set, type in whatever you want, and then save it. Click and that's it. Then here, I'll give, I'll give it a name. We'll, we'll use that name. I've saved this three times already. We're going to save this as study set name and then hit apply and voila. Look at that. You've got everything you want over here now. It's perfectly set up, ready to trade, ready to follow me. And you're going to see when others are moving or not moving. And that's the secret to trading, following the crowd. I don't want to say you want to be a lemming, but you want to know where the lemmings are going. Now, just a little bit of insight here. This chart, one, is set up ideally. It is a perfect chart when you're trading. You would like to see this. Price on the very top, even off of the very top line. And you want that top line to be the smallest of all your lines, the nine day. You want the bottom to be the biggest and the heaviest on the bottom, the 200 sitting on the ocean floor. And you want everything else in the middle in the right order. Nine, 26, 50, the short 200 day trend, which is what I call my haul, and the long 200 day moving trend. That is perfect order. This is when you're going to start getting the price to go up. Let's take a look now down here at the MACD and the RSI. Now, these are two tools that are going to come in handy. You want these to always be going up, just like your lines up here. We always want things to go up unless you're shorting a stock. We're just talking about trading your regular everyday stocks on the market. We always want those prices to go up. So you want to see the positive signs in all cases, right? But just because a MACD is going down does not necessarily mean that the price is going to go down. Your MACD is showing you pressure with the volume that's there. You could have very little volume, but those people trading are wanting that stock and pushing the price up. You could have a lot of volume, but those people want to sell. So just because you have volume doesn't mean it's good volume. And just because you don't have a lot of it doesn't mean it's bad. And that's what this is doing. It's measuring all those factors for you with mathematical calculations that we won't get into. But where do they get that information from? What are these lines? Well, if we jump here to our flask and we get rid of all of our SMAs up to the 26 and the 9. Clear those off our board. There you go. Now, if you look, and I'm going to try to get this in the same shape. That's about right. 
Look at that blue line there. Look at the shape, how it comes down, has a soft, gentle curve, then a whoops. Look here. Comes down, round, swoops. They're the same lines, folks. That orange line is the same as this orange-yellow line. The 9 and the 26, as it says right there, are the two lines that they use with that mathematical equation, and they create a tool that shows us down pressure and up pressure that we can rely on. What you want to basically see is that blue line on top of the 26. Why? That's the lighter one. It's a 9. That's a 26. You always want the bigger number on the bottom. That's just the way the math works. So when you see the blue line underneath the dark line, it's sad. When it crosses over, many people call that a golden cross. That's a power sign. It's like a wrestling move, getting off the bottom and getting onto the top. So when you get that blue line on the top, your MACD is getting stronger. And when it starts pushing up, you know it's getting a lot of strength. Now, the RSI. The RSI is very important. I like the RSI. It tells us oversold and overbought. These are the two lines that they give you as the floor and the ceiling. It is at 30 and 70. I don't like to trade a stock unless it's at least at 60. That's when it starts to move up. That's when there's activity, when it's at 60 and above. 70 is the ceiling. It turns red. It is on fire. It's burning up here. And people call this overbought. And many people expect when it gets overbought that it's going to pull back. And that is the case in many, many cases. But what you end up getting is un indefinite amount of rise. We don't know when it's going to fall back. So that's why you have to read your SMAs, your bars, your MACD and your RSI. No one signal stands alone. You look at everything together. If the light turns green, but there's a pedestrian crossing in front of you, do you still hit your gas and go forward? No, you had another indicator that you had to take into consideration. And experience will teach this to you. Just like watching something over and over and over again, you start to understand how it works just by being a part of it. You don't have to dive in deep like a college education. Just partake. Use it, watch it, get used to seeing how it reacts and you'll be amazed each day you'll learn a little more and you'll be amazed in a year how comfortable you feel with the chart so where does this line come from where do they get this line for the rsi well i'm going to come back up here to our flask and i'm going to get rid of those last two lines no nine no 26. we're going to clear those off so now we have a naked board nothing but the price and that's where they get the line that is the price right there. You just can't see it the way it's set up with the bar chart, the candles. You can change the way the chart sets itself up to a line. I don't trade with a line, but you can see it now, can't you? You see this TP, one drop, two drop, big drop, TP, one drop, two drop, big drop. This is the price line. So everything you have on your MACD and your RSI are already superimposed into that chart. They are there. The information's all there. And I know lots of people that don't use these. They do not use these. But as a beginner trader, absolutely, there's no way they're going to hurt you having these here. When you see red up here at the top above 70, when you see that you have a tsunami of water coming up off the beach, just shooting into the air. When you see volume underneath, you're going to have price action and it's going to rise. So getting used to seeing these things, seeing things break, cross over, you're going to know this was a power sign. Hitting there was a power sign. And when we get all of our lines back up, and how am I going to do that? Well, come in here to our second flask, right? The sets. We just made it, remember? And we called this study set name. So click it, highlight it, use set. There it is. Hit apply and we're good as gold. All I need to do is set this back to my candles, which is how I trade. 
I want to see all that information, though I don't understand it all. I'm learning more and more each day by using it. And it makes more sense to me this way. So now we got everything right back the way it was. Everything looks great. We're ready to trade. Now let's take a look at how to connect charts to scanners. Now we're not going to do any talking about how to do a scan. That's a whole nother talk. Let's just say you found the scan you want to do and you've got all that information down here. The last thing you want to do is have to grab that ticker, click your charts button, come over here, type it in, see what it is. Then jump back to your scan, find another ticker, come over here, type it in and look. No, that is a ton of work. What you want is a quick links button so that you can just scan through your scan just that fast. Whatever your reasons are, this saves you a lot of time and energy. So how do you do it? Well, first thing you got to do is put a button on here. Let's go put a button on it. You come all the way over here to the right. You see this heading symbol description last? I don't know what's on yours, but follow this bar all the way to the right and you're going to find the ever so tiniest icon, that gear. That's right. It's not a pin dot. It's a gear. Click that gear and you're getting an awfully small menu. Click customize. There you go. Everything you want across the top, anything you want to look at in your scan is right here to choose from. You'll click it, hit add item, and it'll populate over here. So you want a button. Which button do you want? Who yelled blue? Blue it is. B-L-U-E. Blue. Look at that. Send to blue. Now I could have told you to type send to, but chances are you would have forgotten it. You're not going to forget your colors. So just type in a color, find your button. Go ahead and hit add item. And it should show up right up. Click add item. There you go. And it should show up at the very bottom like that. Then you can move it all the way to the top if you want to do it manually like this. And it'll show up wherever you put it. Now I'm going to go back in and I'm going to take that out because I don't want it. So I'm going to hit that little icon button again. Go into customize. I'm going to find my blue and remove that and OK. Now I chose the yellow and I dragged it by just grabbing the top like that and pulling it over. Now I've got a button. So how do you attach this, the, the quick chart? Well, first off, you got to have a quick chart. Do you have a quick chart? Let me show you how to get your quick chart. You see this button right there? You probably didn't notice there's a button. That closes your workspace window. Click that button and it opens up. And if you grab the perimeter here with your double arrows, you can make it any size you want. Now, to get your tools over there, I have live news. I have my watch lists over here. I have my quick charts. You can put whatever you want and you'll figure it out as you go along. But right now you definitely want a watch list and you definitely want your quick charts. Come down to the bottom and hit that plus sign. There's your menu. Here's your quick charts. Click that. There's your watch list. Click that. And you may want news too. Whatever it is you want. Click them. Now you've got what I've got. When you click your quick charts, it's going to open up and you're going to have a chart, but it's naked. You don't have any setting tools on it yet, but we did save our settings, right? So come into the second flask. Make sure you see the two flasks go all the way to the far left and look for sets. Remember the one we made, highlight it, use it and apply it and voila. All that we are accustomed to using is now on this chart as well. Now let's connect the link right up here next to your ticker on every single window. You're going to have this. You're probably seeing a link icon like that. Just a bare naked link. There's a tiny, tiny arrow next to it. Boy, are they small. Click that and you get your menu and you can choose whatever you want. In our case, I'm using that yellow too. So I put that up there. That's it. We are connected and I have it so that I can go through here and look at charts at an instant, saving so much time and energy. Now this comes in handy when your day's all through, the bell's gone off and you want to look at charts. You come over here, you do your favorite scan, you bring it up and you start looking for setups on the chart. Maybe you're looking for a low bubble in this corner and a high bubble in that corner. You want something that's been running all week. Maybe you're looking for a Momo play in the morning. You want something that has a lot of volume at the end of the day. 
is screaming red on the RSI, has a tsunami on the MACD, and the price is way up. I don't know, but this is a way to do it. But what if you want to do a search for a day trade during the day while you're playing the market and you're watching other stocks? This is dangerous. You can't see your other plays. And if you don't have any other monitors, you're blind right now. You have no clue what's going on. So there is a way to come over here and use this chart to scan with and then have your plays over here. And remember, you can open up as many windows as you like. You know, you can have as many charts here as you like. Right now, we're just looking at two so I can show you this example. What we're going to do is we are going to take our scan and turn it into a watch list. What happens when you do that is this. I'm going to close this, open up my watch list. We're going back to charts. Now, you see I have my yellow two up here. That's the one I've chosen. And I have a yellow two here. So they're connected. This is a scan that I made a watch list that I can click the name and bring up onto this chart just that quick. You know what else I can do? <laughs> I can also use my keyboard. Yes, I can. I can use the keyboard arrows. If you don't like to hold the mouse and you just want to lean back and you're just scrolling, this is how you can do it. And this is excellent because now I can watch my trade over here without being blind and I can do a search over here just by using the arrow going down and I can see something I'm looking for whatever it is so how do we do that okay let's go back to our scan and you want to save this as a search so over here now I'm not sure how yours is going to be set up but I have three of these three line icons over here mine is in the middle you can just click them and see what menu comes up what you're looking for is save scan query. That's what you want. When you click that, say yes, 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 yes. Then give it a name. I've already happened to save this one. You can see the name right there. Humble right there. That's the name I gave it. So you would click save and voila, there you go. You have your watch list. And what is great about this is chances are this scan is a scan you're going to do repeatedly. If it's one of your favorite scans, save it. And it's always current. It's constantly being updated. It's not like you have to go over there and cancel this and put it back in when it's new. No, it's always updated. So at any moment, I can come over here and you see where the word humble is? Another tiny arrow. There are lots of searches that you can put in. Lots of different watch lists, if you will, including all of yours. Personal. And they go through the alphabet. So I would come down here to personal, C through N, there's my humble. But I have lots of them. I have Momo plays. And they're all connected to my normal charts. Oh boy, that one ran good. Now see, there's a great play for Monday maybe, right? It was ripping at the end of the day. The MACD was screaming high. Look at that volume and look at that price. Just screaming. This is AVVH. So these are why we have watch lists because there was a reason we looked at it and wanted to save it and we put them over there. And this is a quick way to look at them while I'm trading or while I'm off the market and don't have to worry. I can come through here because there's a lot of information here that you're going to want to see. So this is what I do during the day while I'm trading as well as after market hours when I'm looking for stocks. Saves me a lot of time, a lot of effort, and you'd be amazed at how many you can see each time you sit down in the amount of time you give yourself. Now, I hope that helps you. I know there's a lot of information there. I tried to make it as simple and clear as I could, and there's a lot of peripheral information that's gonna help you along the way. But that's the basic setup for charting, and that is also the basic setup for connecting your charts to your scanners. Hopefully, that's gonna get you right on the same page with me. I'm going to be looking for you at On Top and Hot and anything else I do. I invite you over to Titan Trading, folks. Penny Boys has this set up just for OTC stocks, cryptocurrency, and NFTs. So if any of this is interesting to you, come on over. We are a professional group. We'd like to help. We'd like to teach. We'd like to share. We'd like to be a part of what you're doing. We'd like you to be a part of what we're doing, too. Thanks for coming. And remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.